doo doo dee I'm Kill Kronikan, and I'm back with more post views. I haven't made any videos in a while because I was pretty occupied with some other stuff. Anyway, this time it's about Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Conviction. So, if you don't know, there are six game series inspired by Tom Clancy's books. The Ghost Recon, Rainbow Six, End War, H-A-W-X, which actually spells out Hawks, so I guess that's what the game series are named, Hawks. But it's actually four initials, Just so what whatever. And the Splinter Cell series. Each series contains a multitude of games. So in this video I'm going to talk about the Splinter Cell series, and to be more precise about the Conviction game, which is the sixth game in the Splinter Cell franchise. For the concerns of those who didn't play the game yet, but are planning to, I'm just saying you are going to find no spoilers here. Enjoy. Oh, and as always, you see some game action throughout the boring part of this post view. Enjoy. Before we begin, I have to say, there is no reason to watch or play this game if you haven't watched, played or read the story of the previous games in the Splinter Cell series, because you will understand absolutely nothing. The characters are often talking in codes which you will not understand if you don't know the history of the Splinter Cell series. And not all the events are in the present, and overall, the game is not following the timeline. So pay attention to the story if you want to understand it, but still you have to know the story up to this game to understand it. In this installment, Sam Fisher has left third echelon and investigating a rumor that his daughter's death wasn't an accident. Sam Fisher is the protagonist of this series, and the third echelon is a secret splinter cell of the NSA, which is actually the National Security Agency in America, obviously. In a drastic change from the previous games, Sam is perceived to be much quicker, stronger, and far brutal in his quest for truth. Sam is following a lead about his daughter's death. He heard from someone that it wasn't an accident, and he just had to know for sure, because otherwise we wouldn't get another game in this franchise, would we now? Game mechanics. Beginning with conviction, players are able to mark enemies and environmental objects to quickly and efficiently execute market enemies within range in quick succession via headshots with the push of a button. Each weapon also comes with a certain amount of marks, and some weapons can also be upgraded to have an additional mark with the red dot sight upgrade. So basically, you can only mark as many enemies with a weapon as many marks a weapon your current weapon has. New Futurids Environmental Interrogation Gameplay The interrogation of selected NPCs using the immediate environment Projected text and films The story is amazingly told in real time through text, still images and film clips projected onto the foreground of the game environment. Prompts are also integrated into the game through the projection of names of people and mission objectives. Black and white desaturation replaces the light meter of previous games. When the player character steps into the shadows, the environment will desaturate into black and white. This indicates to the player that they are hidden from enemies. But this doesn't mean they are completely invisible. Last known position. If detected by an enemy and you run and break the line of sight, a white translucent silhouette of the player's character will appear exactly where the enemy last saw them. Interrogation can be performed to very limited NPCs, but in this game, interrogation is more violent. Conviction now allow players to aim a weapon faster by zooming in when a near guard's head automatically moving the reticle over it, but only if the weapon has a red dot sight attached. All sidearms also have unlimited ammo in reserve. Enemy weapons can be picked up and used. Can start a car's alarm to lure away the guards from their posts.
check things out. And that's it. These are the new future it's integrated in the game. Some gameplay mechanics from previous Splinter Cell games were omitted in the conviction. This includes multivision goggles replaced by sonar goggles, picking up and throwing missileless items, the split jump, an acrobatic maneuver that involved jumping up the wall of a narrow corridor to hide above enemies. Lockpicking minigames, lockpicking was done automatically in this game. Hacking minigames, hacking was also done automatically in this game. Whistling, crawling through air ducts, hiding under beds and lockers, etc. Bursting down doors, non-lethal weapons, and non-lethal attacks unless the mission requires. There are multiple types of weapons in this game. There are pistols, automatic pistols, submachine guns, assault rifles, battle rifles, and of course shotguns. All of these weapons can be acquired by picking them up from the ground or from dead enemies. And actually, this is the way that you unlock a weapon in this game. Which, you ask me, is pretty realistic. As the game develops, you get NPCs and enemies with more advanced weapons and more advanced tactics. So if you defeat them, you can acquire their weapon. There are a lot of gadgets which are given to Sam by NPCs while the story develops. There are flashbang grenades which stun the enemy. Frag grenades which damage them and maybe kill them if you're lucky enough. EMP grenades which creates an electromagnetic pulse and overloads and overfries all electric stuff in his radius. There is a portable EMP which does the same. But the player doesn't need to throw them like grenades, just detonates on the back of Sam and it has a larger radius and even stuns enemies for a short time. The sticky camera just like in the previous games and the remote mine which can be detonated with the remote trigger. Why not? Still out there. Perimeter check. We've got a disturbance here. Hang on while I investigate. What was that? These gadgets make the player's job much more easier in some tight situations, so use them wisely if you ever are to play this game. The story taking place three years after the events of Double Agent in 2011. Former Navy SEAL Victor Coast is held in a Black Arrow facility interrogation room as he is interviewed by an unidentified group of men recalling recent events in the past tense. The whole story takes place in, an, in and around Washington DC, except the prologue of the game which is set off in Malta. I said no spoilers guys, and there is none, but I have to talk a little about the characters. There are a few who support Sam Fisher's crusade and help him on his quest for the truth and the greater good. Like Anna Grimm's daughter, Victor Coast, a fellow Marine of Sam's, which they were together in the army, and of course, the Madam President herself. Sam doesn't have many friends, so he has to fight smart, because even Third Echelon is coming after him now. But that's all I can tell you guys, if you want to find out why is Sam convicted and why he is on the run from Third Echelon and Third Echelon is haunting him, then you just have to play the game for yourself. Or watch a YouTube walkthrough of the game, or a movie version of the game, there are pretty many options, and you can all find them on YouTube. Because, let's be honest, what can't you find on YouTube today? But, I highly recommend it to you. It's a nice game with a great story, if you know all the stories up to date, up to date this game from the Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell franchise. The only shitty thing is the controls. I wasn't satisfied with the controls of the game. I mean, if you play this game, sometimes the character is not doing the stuff you want him to do. What I mean by this is not that a ghost from behind you is pressing other buttons to do some random stuff, but it's pretty tricky sometimes, because the controls are not as well synchronized as in other third-person shooters. For example, the game mechanics doesn't let you go diagonally. You can press W and A or D at the same time. You can only press W and turn the character with your mouse. 
which sucks most of the time, because when you really have to find a hiding spot pretty quickly, because 10 armed guards are shooting at you, it sucks, really sucks, trust me. Other than this, I find no other flaws. NPCs spot you pretty easily once they catch you in their sight, and they shoot quite accurately. Of course, this depends on the difficulty you play the game on. But, I have to say, this is a pretty challenging game in some situations. NPCs also flank you, so this makes it even more harder and challenging. Plus, your character dies pretty easily because you don't have a health meter, a health bar or whatever, HP. Which also makes the game more realistic and awesome. The graphics. The graphics are pretty awesome for a game developed in 2010. It runs perfectly in high performance in the highest resolution. So I have to say it. Ubisoft made a pretty damn good job this time. I know Ubisoft is not uh, popular after making games without bugs and without degrading the graphic quality of the game, but this time it's pretty good. I'm satisfied. Thanks Ubisoft. The animations are pretty smooth and awesome as well. I think all this is because the game runs on a highly modified Unreal Engine 2.5. So this is it, I hope I didn't miss anything, if I did miss something important please let me know in the comments down below, that would be awesome. Thanks for watching and again I recommend this game but only if you are a Tom Clancy's fan, because this game will get on your nerves if not. Thanks for watching guys, this was the Splinter Cell Conviction post view, if you enjoyed it please give it a like. If it helped you decide to play the game or not then please share this video so it might help others as well and as always don't forget to subscribe until next time hoodie doody way over his head for this one someone took out the chandelier <laughs>